don't feed the beast. <laughs> so get rid of the chemicals, get rid of the artificial sweeteners, get rid of the food dyes, get eliminate um, sugar as much as you can, unless from natural sources. And does that mean like, oh, he can never have a cupcake? No, it doesn't mean that. That will have an impact nutritionally for us because the brain will begin to um, lower its addictive uh, tendency. Welcome to the Family Care Learning Podcast. My name is Scott Hort. I'm the training manager here for the agency, and we are super excited to have a special guest with us today to talk to us about nutrition, about the things we put in our bodies, and how important it is that we pay attention to that, especially with if, if we have children who have some high needs, or maybe they're up and down and all over the place. We need things to help them regulate, and nutrition is a way to do that. And so Stephanie's here, and Stephanie, tell us a little bit about what you do uh, and your title. Okay. Well, I think that was really great. Scott. Yeah. You just yeah. Did I, did I pull, describe yes, what you do? Yes. Okay. Yes. You pulled it together really nicely on exactly who we're, uh, who our clientele are and who we're addressing. Okay. Um, so I'm Stephanie Kroon. I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, I, wait. Say I, that I, again. <laughs> functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. Oh, that's awesome. I know. You left it up to me to say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I a lot of words. I pronounce that. Right? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so um, basically, I, I help, I help um, bring nutrient dense antioxidant rich foods into families lives yeah. and a lot of you know who we serve and um, you know even who's in my life is um, our kids with high needs like you said dysregulation maybe on the spectrum uh, could be even be presenting with um, ADHD. Mm -hmm. And we know that food helps to regulate. Food can help nourish. Uh, food can help calm the body if it's the right food. And so really what I do is I come in and I educate. And I yeah. help families create the um, the food that's needed so it's, so it's delivering the right nutrition to the kids. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Wow, that's fabulous. So tell us a little bit how you got started with this. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously you have a whole uh, business around mm -hmm. this, but it got started somehow. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I did. So I've been in the wellness industry for 20 plus years. Okay, sure. Um, but most specifically, really felt um, a calling from God to step up and serve um, our kids that are coming from foster care and mm -hmm. coming um, into our lives through adoption. And that's only because we did that as well. And so I'm the mom of three boys and two of my uh, two of our kids are biological. And then we adopted and uh, we had no idea. Um, what to expect and how adoption was going to touch our lives. Um, it's an amazing experience. It's an amazing process. Um, it's certainly not an easy one, nor are our biological kids. We're never promised that anything's going to be easy, but <clears throat> He definitely um, kept us on our toes, and I learned a ton um, by being his mom. I've learned so much. And one of the things, though, is that when he came home to us, um, and if anybody can relate to this, he just he screamed day and night. He was incredibly dis, uh, dysregulated. Yeah. He was six months old. Okay. And um, I just dove into how I can help him to regulate. And you know, it's interesting because what I thought I was feeding him actually wasn't the best thing for him. And that's because a lot of times these kids that come from trauma and he does have in utero exposure. And so a lot of trauma in his body, it, it actually foods that were even healthy. So we thought really were not for him. He was sensitive to particular foods. They were dysregulating his mm. system. He was living in fight or flight and mm. he would eat frequently. Mm. And mm -hmm. what I know now is that actually helps to calm the body, right? Is feeding and nourishing throughout mm. the day helps mm -hmm. to regulate those cortisol levels and his blood sugar. Um, and so we just dove into what does it look like to help you naturally and holistically? And that's how I now show up for my families as well. And I, I was just talking that um, it takes a toolbox. I called it my she shed um, okay. because it takes a lot to come in and help to heal. I, I feel like I can say heal because the body is fully capable of healing. It really, truly is. But we have to give it everything that it needs to be able to take those steps, to be able to get healing to happen. And it was not one thing that was done for my son. It was multiple tools that were brought into our life that I, I feel like I was the mom that was like, okay, sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll try that. Okay. You want to try that? Okay. Let's try that too. Because I knew that there was something there. God was going to provide all the things and all the tools that we needed. Yeah. I just had to be open yeah. 
Yeah. And I just had to learn and we just had to accept it and, and just see how it goes for him. So. And that's a good message right mm-hmm. there because uh, it, it is, is, it, that is to try different things, mm-hmm. to, to be open. Yes. To, yeah, try different things. And yes. and a lot of times with the first reaction we have is with a child that's not regulated, that's that's having a hard time with regulation, is we have either like some kind of managed behavior or some kind of uh, like uh, medication yeah. or something like that. But you're saying, no, let's take a step back at what, mm-hmm. what nutrition we're, we're providing for the child. And, and even, even greater to that, I think you take a step back and say, but why? Okay. Like he's mm-hmm. dysregulated. So what comes first? What caused the dysregulation? Let's step back and look at what, what's he trying to communicate to me? What does he need? What are his needs? Because we know that when needs aren't met, we get behaviors, we get aggression, we get impulsivity. Sometimes that is even there, even though needs are being met. However, we, we have to look at the person and the individual and say, what are your needs? Yeah. And so that does piggyback yeah. on what you just said, which is what are their nutritional needs as well? Yeah. So what could their body be missing? What could it be deficient in? What are we not we're not feeding it, right? Because our, mm-hmm. our food contains antioxidants, nutrients, and vitamins. And that's the only way we can get it unless we're popping pills all day long. And I don't know how many kids you know that are swallowing pills and taking it in that way. Yeah. They're eating. So let's make sure they're eating the right foods to nourish all of those systems in their mm-hmm. body. And then also, you, I think, I don't know if you talk about this in, is in your training as well, but you were talking about eating throughout the day. Mm-hmm. So maybe there, is there a schedule that is important for these So that's a really good question. Um, When we're specifically talking about trauma, I don't give a schedule. And because I don't want that to be a battle Mm -hmm. and I don't want them to feel like that's something they need to control. So I've always allowed food to happen when it needs to happen, when the child asks. I just make sure that my kitchen is full of foods that will nourish the body. Mm -hmm. And I do like the love and logic way for that of, I love you so much and you are able to have anything that you would like here even though it might not be what they're asking for. But if, if, I'm, if I don't have it in my home, I can't provide it. Mm-hmm. So I am filling my house with fruits and vegetables and mm-hmm. nourishing foods, and you are able to have anything you like whenever you want. Yeah, and that's really important for a foster adopted it child. Is. I mean, you know, we know from research and other others, professionals, they say that, you know, they have to have feel safe mm-hmm. and a freedom to make those choices. Yes. And um, that empowers them. And so also, but how could you help a foster adoptive family or, or a family that has a, a child that has some special needs? How would you encourage the, the, the parents to incorporate the child in some of this food prep yeah. or something like that? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So that's something that I did early on with my kids was I brought them into the kitchen. Okay. And, and there's one thing I will say, what a great bonding experience mm-hmm. that can happen side by side and doing that work. I think it's really precious that you can stand next to your child and create something together, Mm -hmm. something that you're going to sit down and enjoy together. And also it really helps to build their self-esteem inside Mm -hmm. to know that they were a part of that. And so it's a, I think it's a really neat experience. And one thing that I was saying was that, um, you know, we had, we had sleepless nights. We had, we had, I had days of, of extreme exhaustion and, um, there were emotions that would come up for me. I, I felt angry. I felt mad. I felt bitter. I felt resentful. That's the reality that I was feeling because of my extreme exhaustion. And, but, but with grace, I was able to stand next to this little guy, pull up his stool and let him crack some eggs and the achievement and the eggs all over the place. Yeah. And we would giggle and laugh through that. Right. And he would learn that it's okay to spill milk and it's okay to not have an egg go in the bowl. And those things are okay to mess up. Mm-hmm. Right. And we just do it again. And then we do, we, we learn from it. And then when you sit down at the table, maybe perhaps a resistance that used to be there at the table, because I don't like that. And I don't want that. And I don't, I don't want to eat that was now embraced differently because he had a part of creating it and now sitting down and enjoying it. When you reminded him, Hey, look at the work that you did up there. Look what it looks like now. And we get to enjoy this together. All yeah. of a sudden that shifted them out of this defiance. I'm going to fight you into this. Oh yeah, that is pretty cool. I I did have a part in that. And I, and so it created this, um, a better relationship, I think with yes. food. 
Yes, and, and Any, it's a positive feeling about you, about food, yes. the whole process. Yes. And it really switches their thinking. Absolutely. Because their food was survival, and it should not be. It should be enjoyed and yes. that kind of thing. So uh, something also you said is really important. I want to back, circle back around. You said that it's important when we're not regulated, when we're getting emotionally exhausted, it, should that nutrition be important to us as caregivers? Yes, that's a great point that you bring up. So it really is. I talk about the dysregulation, not just being of the child, but the entire family is now dysregulated, okay. Okay, right? Okay. Because yeah. that dysregulation, that's, the, I, I would call my son the thermostat of the home, right? <laughs> if he was hot, we're all hot. <laughs> and we're all, we're kind of all on like that. Yeah. And, and so how can you, how can you simmer that down and, and cool that down? Um, but what you're feeding your body helps your hormones to regulate because mm -hmm. we know that cortisol is an incredibly powerful and important hormone and it helps save our, our butts and, and, and a lot of things. But when it's, it goes chronically elevated, then that's when it has, um, it has a cascade effect on multiple systems of our body. It affects our digestive system. If we're living in that fight flight and our cortisol levels are elevated all the time, we're not appropriately digesting food. Mm -hmm. If we're not appropriately digesting food and we have digestive dysfunction, that also um, has an impact on our neurotransmitters. And those neurotransmitters, such as serotonin, 90% of them are made in the digestive system. So that serotonin is not making it up to the brain. And that serotonin helps us feel relaxed and helps us feel good and helps us enjoy life and helps us sleep at night. And now that communication's broken. And it's because we're dysregulated to begin with. So how can we properly fuel our body so that our blood sugar can be regulated and our cortisol levels can be regulated and we're getting the proper nutrition mm -hmm. to allow regulation to happen in ourselves, which then in turn, we can help those around us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I think everything you're saying is pretty, pretty obvious for families to hear and listen, mm -hmm. but is there some like one or two things that you yes. would say, if I could just tell a foster mm -hmm. parent or a parent that has a child that, that is having a hard time with this regulation, what, what could you tell them that would be maybe one of your big takeaways? Yeah. I, my biggest thing really, especially for our kiddos that come from trauma who most likely present also with ADHD mm -hmm. and right. maybe even some OCD, just some, uh, some of those tendencies, hyperactivity, impulsivity, mm -hmm. and because they live in that fight or flight, it's what can we do to bring those levels down? Don't feed the beast. <laughs> so get rid of the chemicals, get rid of the artificial sweeteners, get rid of the food dyes, get, eliminate um, sugar as much as you can, unless from natural sources. And does that mean like, oh, he can never have a cupcake? No, it doesn't mean that. But we can create cupcakes in our house um, from real whole food sources. Like I make muffins and cupcakes and things like that all the time for, for my kids, but they don't come from a box. Mm, they're not full yeah. of chemicals. They're not full of additives. They're made from real whole foods. And we can enjoy the natural food sources and it that will have an impact nutritionally for us because the brain will begin to um, lower its addictive uh, tendency, mm, okay. the need for it. We we just um, the dopamine receptors that are in our brain stop to uh, they stop asking for it and needing it and wanting it. So we actually see that organic change happen in the in the body. And so that's my biggest thing is is like get rid of the processed foods. And I understand it's hard to do it completely, but you can, we can do changes. Like we can take fruit snacks and get rid of the dyes and do a fruit snack. That's more from a natural source. Like right. black forest has a natural fruit snack that doesn't have dyes in it. That's an easy swap. You can still have fruit snacks, mm -hmm. but we're not doing the fruit snacks that have the unicorns on the label or Scooby Doo <laughs> yeah. on the label right, right, right. that are full with <laughs> blue dyes and red 40 and right. all of those things that have been shown to increase the impulsivity, aggressiveness, behavior, in our kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it looks like it, it seems like, Oh, it sounds like hard work because yeah. you know what? I mean, it's easier just to grab that box that's on the shelf and it's, it's hard work. But I think what I hear you saying is you put in the hard work, the d benefits are long lasting because oh. you're reshaping, yes. you're re, you know, wiring, I guess, yeah, rewiring, the <laughs> word. you know, mm -hmm. the, the child's, yes. uh, uh, tendencies and, and desires. Yeah. So, and I think it comes down to um, the education, right? Okay. So parents need to make a choice on being educated. And I think education brings power. And 
in that moment, when you have the education, you also have the power to make the right decision. So when I'm standing at Fry's Marketplace and I have shelves of fruit snacks, for example, I just going to turn them around and I'm just going to look at the ingredients. And when the ingredients don't have dyes in them, then I can make that choice. And that's just one cleanup right there mm. that you can make. Okay. That brings me to, <laughs> uh, where can they find more information about this? Tell us a little bit about, about your, um, uh, website and some things okay. that you offer as service and just anything that we can, they can do to get some resources. Yeah. So my website is my name. It's stephaniecroon.com, K-R-E-U-N. And then I have a practice that's with the Integrative Healing Center of Arizona, okay. which okay. is in Gilbert, Arizona, gotcha. where we have multiple um, trauma-trained, trauma-informed therapists. And then I myself do the nutrition work. Um, I create meal plans. I create recipes. I sit one-on-one -on -one and talk about nutrition. I also do testing in my practice. Practice, which I think is really valuable because a lot of times for years we've just been guessing um, and we, I like to do food sensitivity tests. I like to do gut microbiome testing when I do that through a gut zoomer where we actually look at the microbiome and the bacteria that's present or bacteria that's not present and we can come in and, and really design a plan around what the body is needing. Um, I find that to be incredibly helpful. I also teach parents on you know, just cleaning up the environment, good sleep hygiene, instead of melatonin gummies, what are we doing to create an atmosphere that your child feels safe, secure, and able to fall asleep in? Because we can't fall asleep if we don't feel safe, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to create an environment that a child feels safe in so that they can comfortably fall asleep. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. Well, thanks good. so much for being with Absolutely. us today. And, it was a uh, pleasure. Yeah, so interesting. And we, things that we take for granted, eating food every day, but we don't realize there's going to be so much benefits to that. If we take a little time to, mm -hmm. to do a little research and really uh, make it intentional about yes. what we're eating and that kind of thing. Absolutely. So. And I always teach my parents, like, we're, we're on a journey and it's a long journey. And, you know, when we're doing foster care, we're doing adoption, um, it's an even harder journey. And we are not looking to be perfect because we can't, we don't show up in the world that way, but I'm going to make progress every day. And it could be little teeny tiny progress, but just know, I mean, here we are 10 years into being adoptive parents. And I look back and mm -hmm. other people look back and it's not even this, our child has grown and matured so much. And people comment all the time on how, how much he's grown and how different he is. Mm -hmm. And it's through showing up and doing the work. I didn't, I don't always feel that work on a day. I don't feel yeah. that on a daily basis, right. but when I look back over a period of time, it's so unbelievable. And so yeah. you have to paint that picture for parents of this is what it can be. Just let me, let me walk this with you. Let me walk this journey with you. Because like you said, nutrition's foundational and we we're eating every day. It's just, what are we choosing to put in our body? Yeah. Right on. Very healing. Well, well, thank you so much. Yeah. And and if you're here watching, listening, and you're struggling with with, with this whole issue, uh, just reach out. Reach out mm -hmm. to Stephanie. Reach out to us at Christian Family Care. We we have resources and we have people. We have a counseling center that we can help you with in that way. And so there's lots of things that you can do to, to get some help. So mm -hmm. we encourage you to do that. Thanks yeah. again for coming. Thank you. Thanks for all you guys do. Yep. All right. Good deal. All right.